All right, what's up, everyone? MK Tom Brady. I'm joined by Mike Hollow again. And uh, NRS just dropped a... Uh, there was a lot going on in general uh, with NRS lately, but uh, they, out of nowhere, unannounced, no combat cast, dropped a uh, quote-unquote balance patch with uh, some pretty significant uh, implications on the game. Uh, I'm joined by Mike Hollow. Mike, in general, what are your like first thoughts on this after reading it all? Uh, I started laughing when I started reading it. Um, the fact that they've had to patch the 29 frames to match one uh, to round one again. Uh, apparently, this was a glitch that existed in the 3D games as well. So this is like a reoccurring theme with them. Uh, fair enough, they've patched it. They had to. But it's just funny that this is now the third time it's happened in a Mortal Kombat game. In terms of character balance changes, uh, I think that this is one of the worst balance patches I've seen put out for a game that desperately needed some kind of overhaul to make it feel a little bit more fun. Um, I've told people a hundred times before, and I'll say it a hundred times again, Peacemaker's not going to save the game for as much fun as he might be for people to play. And I've seen people praising the character design. I am not, I'm not one of those people, unfortunately. I think he's better than some of the other characters, but he's definitely not going to save the game. But for them to balance the game and basically make a couple like changes so that Johnny Cage, his uh, his down front punch goes from seven frames to six, uh, reducing a bit of damage on block on Kenshi, reducing a little bit of damage for Raiden, and then the cameo fight is basically just being nerfed so that you move your attention from focusing on one move they might do that's powerful to now moving over to another one. So it's essentially what they did with Cyrax. They nerfed Cyrax so people just moved to Striker. Now people are going to move to Kano. And it's just like... It's just the same shit, different day. You know, they're completely tone deaf. Yeah, uh, so on the the first thing you mentioned, the uh, moving before the round, for those that don't know, um, we people could move before the round and they attempted to fix it in the first patch. Spoilers, much like with the desync, they tried to fix it multiple times. It didn't work. People were still moving before the round. So in the 3D games, this was a bug where you could move and hit people before the round started, and it carried over into this game. Somehow that bug was reappeared. Uh, so now they made it so the uh, player in round two and uh, is now delayed by... Round two, both players were delayed by 29 frames before they can move. Apparently, there was a bug in which they could move 29 frames earlier. So the round start time was not the same for the first and second and third rounds, which is a ridiculous bug that is now fixed six months later. Uh, as far as like the balance patching goes, for one, if they this to me just shows, again, that they are not as dumb or handcuffed by Warner Brothers or hand, whatever, that they couldn't say anything. They did a combat cast, and it was a perfect time to really talk about these changes. But there's no way they didn't know how these changes would be received. So they don't say anything at all, and then they just drop it. And, um, you know, uh, in case you guys didn't see the patch notes, the nerfs are Johnny Cage, his down one, which was six frames, which is used by him to really kind of bully people. A lot of times situations where he's at zero, he can down one you, uh, because it's still kind of a plus one because his down one's faster than everybody else. They made him generic, seven frame down one, pretty much same as everyone else, not Quan Chi. And his 1-1, uh, one, one, which was plus 3, is now plus 1. Now, the problem with Johnny Cage wasn't his plus frames. The problem wasn't his down 1. There was no real problem at all. The problem was the rest of the characters don't have their situations, for the most part, the way a character like him or Raiden and Kenshi had theirs. So the problem it wasn't that their situations were so unfair, but situations like this were few and far between in the game. Uh this is a terrible, it, it, to me, it immediately puts Johnny Cage near the lower part. Immediately. That and mm. the fact that they nerfed Kung Lao's cameo and the striker at the same time, I think really hurts this character. Because Johnny Cage would either get in for free by putting Kung Lao on the screen and doing a shadow kick, or uh, he could do stuff into striker, etc. Now striker has Goro's cooldown. They nerfed Kung Lao, so Kung Lao's low hat, if you hold it, will now come back slower. And it's not super slow, but it's not super fast. I think it's been drastically hurt. Striker's been drastically hurt. They slap Kenshi and Raiden on the wrist. Look, Peacemaker of the nerfs, I don't think like I think are game-breaking, you know, but I mean, an extra second of cooldown on 
Eagle's uh, ground bird and the, the uh, his cooldown after uh, Eagle assists during his shove. Now uh, half a second cooldown. So they did they did add some cooldown on that kind of stuff. But to me, the biggest nerfs are to the cameos more so than even Johnny Cage because this is a cameo game. People characters rely on Striker and Kung Lao, two of the two of the most popular cameos. And really, cameo wise, what do we have right now? We have Chameleon, Kung Lao, Striker, occasionally Goro, and then Kano. Yeah. It feels like almost like you know what Janet Cage is coming. Why would people want to play Janet Cage if they could use Striker for a better cooldown or Kung Lao for anything? So it feels like they're trying to, you know, have more cameos playable, not by giving them more power, by removing power from other cameos. So it, basically, they're making their game even more bland. Like, hey, listen, we're going to take away with these cameos your ability to use these cameos as effective as you want. And maybe now you'll be forced to use something else. That is mm-hmm. not how to balance a game. They're just making, they're just take, and there was no buffs. Like sometimes you'll see a patch and they'll nerf some things and buff some things. They just took power from Johnny Cage, took power from Kung Lao, took power from Striker. And those two cameo nerfs is, is a significant nerf to a lot of the cast. Then they slap Raiden and Kenshi on the wrist. So now those two are head and shoulders above everybody else. But for the most part, the rest of the game is now reduced to poke, 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 backdash, throw, less cameos to be used. I mean, it's it's more by less. Maybe more cameos will be used, but the gameplay will be even more boring and stale. So it's still a giant L. Yep. I don't think they understand that. The, one of the major criticisms of Mortal Kombat 1 is that it is extremely bland and it doesn't feel like you're playing a game with characters that have supernatural abilities because it's all just poke, throw, poke, throw, poke, throw. And then to take away more from the characters is not how you fix the balance. I mean, to be honest with you, the design of the game is so flawed that whatever direction they try to go in, there are better ways to do it than this, but it's not going to be much better because the game's already a hot mess. But this was definitely not the way to go. I can't understand why you would have a game that is considered a peeled onion and peel more layers away from it and and then all they've done is they've taken the attention of one move and they've made a particular resource unviable now or not as viable as it used to be and they've just moved it again it's the exact same thing they did with cyrax so it's really it's, it's a nothing patch this patch may as well have not happened because they decided to nerf kung lao and then they left kano and i was like what was i don't understand if and you're left gonna... chameleon and you know tweety made a point like that like why nerf these cameos but leave chameleon yeah like it makes no sense if you're going to go down the nerfing route then why not bring everyone down so that it's more in line if you're going for balance which i again i don't think is the right route to go with this game because it's already pretty bland but if that's their logic then they they sort of like messed up their own logic as well so I don't know, man. Like NRS's decision making just seems to be hyper reactionary. They don't seem to put any sort of thought behind it. I don't even think that this patch was planned when the combat cast happened. I think that they just sort of did this overnight. That's what it looks like from the. Ver- I mean, it's a very small balance patch, and there's not much going on, and it's the same shit again. It's it's the same game. There's just now less with these characters. Yeah, I d- what I don't understand is for one. Doing your moves less doesn't help, right? So being able to use cameos less, which means your cameos allow you to do your moves more because a lot of times cameos are covering what you're doing. So being able to do less doesn't help. Johnny Cage can do less. Uh, Yeah. Striker, anything with Striker now can has to do it less. Same with Kung Lao. You know, and and even though the hat charge is not super. Uh, slow it's still slow enough to where what made it thing is it created vortex type characters to where they could loop the situation multiple times instead of kind of one and they can't do it again yeah Um, it just it's just and i know it's not about whether you do or don't like the vortex it doesn't and even if you're someone that says oh yeah i'm tired of people doing you know hat or striker into full screen move that needed to be nerfed what you don't understand is it's still not nerfed 
they will just find another cameo to do it. The game itself did not change. People will still do it. It may not be as effective. It may not be as abusable, but it's still going to happen because the game doesn't allow for anything else. It just It's the same thing I did with Cyrex. Like they nerfed Cyrex because, oh, I'm tired of people doing this in terms of Raid and Storm Cell. But he just did it with Kano and he can still do it with Kano. Or yeah. Scorpion, you know, spear spin into Cyrex. I'm tired of that. You know, it's all that happens. That's the whole game. Well, the, he just, just did it in a striker. And now he'll probably have to do it into Kano as well, you know, or a chameleon with Katana's uh, fan lift or something like that. I mean, there's really, I just don't see, they didn't, they didn't fix anything is the problem. They didn't, they actually just watered the gameplay down more. They gave you less options. The ability to do moves less, to do cameos less. I really think people are going to, they're just going to use Kano more. And probably, yeah. so now we're probably going to have a game where we have Kano, uh, Janet Cage, and Chameleon. So they didn't really, enforcing people, well, now you have to use another cameo that doesn't do as much. You're forcing them to do less. And for some reason, NRS doesn't realize people don't like that. Yeah, that seemed to be something that fine game developers thought for a while. Like, let's take things away and dumb things down. And obviously, the FGC and the wider community responded because games like Street Fighter Five took stuff away. And they found now that people actually like having options. They like there being a bit of depth. They like being able to turn the game on and think to themselves, oh, you know, I haven't really tried this out, but with Mortal Kombat 1... I still feel like I know everything there is to know about Shao Kahn, for example. I don't feel like I need to go into training mode or learn anything. Obviously, you can get better at games, but there's no complexity to Mortal Kombat 1. And for this patch to come in and not really address that, um, I saw your video about the soul of Mortal Kombat basically being non-existent. And I think that this patch, even though it's not as drastic as like, the game itself, it's just added to that. And it adds to the the notion that the people over at NRS really don't have much of an idea of what they're doing anymore. At least that's what it seems like to me. I mean, they, their characters don't even make sense to me anymore. You've got a character that is basically like a raging inferno, but he's standing there going poke, poke, and then spinning his ninjutsu thing around a little bit, and that's the entire gameplay. It's just like, uh, what am I watching? This isn't Mortal Kombat. Yeah, and f and for, for anyone that says oh, it's a strategic game. What I want you to realize is that fighting games are not. Like, poke, backdash, and then you catch a move for Mortal Kombat is considered like Omega Big Brain, which is just tells you how stupid and simple the game is. That's something that is considered a simple, basic, level one thing in every game in Mortal Kombat is the highest of the highest of the highest of brain cells, which just tells you just how low the game actually is. Uh, fighting games are not poke, poke, poke. You have situations where you have to poke out of things, but Mortal yeah. Kombat is right next to each other. Poke, 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 throw, throw, poke, poke, back. That's not fighting games. Fighting games are situations. The neutral is jockeying for those situations, right? I mean, I watched the video where I showed where the Sub-Zero player had the Scorpion player in the corner. In You're in assist game. You have the player in the corner. Or even if you're Tekken and you have the guy up against the wall, this is when you really put it on them. And he's doing poke, 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 poke. In an assist game, go play yeah. Marvel, put someone in a corner and see what happens. It's, it's not... It's, this is, and for NRS to see this and think what we need to do is take less. I mean, I don't know if they saw a striker being used too much. It feels like the same thing like the Cyrex patch. I really feel like people tried to say, the shills tried to say, oh, this patch was planned in advance. It wasn't a knee-jerk reaction to the first major. I absolutely believe it was. Because yeah. like you said, you don't believe this plan was, this patch was planned. They're coming off a tournament in which every other cameo is striker. So what do they do? They hit striker. Kung Lao, I think they probably figured, you know what, people he's been on the chopping block for a while. We'll take him a little bit more too. And I think that's really what happened. And I don't why are you gonna touch Johnny Cage? If you're gonna nerf things, why nerf Johnny Cage and then keep Kenshi and Raiden? 
It makes yeah. no sense to me. Raiden basically went untouched, didn't he? he just got like a minor Ch damage. Yeah. As did Kenshi. Yeah. Basically, I mean, they still do what they do. Uh, yeah. And Johnny Cage, now where does his offense? He won one is plus one. So all he can do is down one. That's all he can do. I don't know why people think that these things have been planned because the reaction to Mortal Kombat 1 has been very negative. Even when you look at the amount of people playing the game, both on Twitch and on YouTube. And for people to think that they're planning these patches, don't you think that if they had something in the works, it would be something to salvage the reputation of this game so that it gets its numbers up like Tekken and Street Fighter? I don't know how people can look at this and think that this was planned or the last one was. These are clearly reactionary, and they're not really done with much thought either. No, and, and what's weird is I... Tekken 8 comes out, and this was the first time that I felt MK really had any heat put on them, right? Like, ever. Yeah. And I thought, okay, surely, in some way, they will respond. And they respond with a terrible combat cast, probably the worst one they've ever done, in which they delivered on nothing. Crossplay didn't deliver it fully. The most important part for tournaments didn't deliver it said they fixed a bug that they didn't fix, said that the art team worked hard and really nailed the season that nobody worked on at all on the art team. It was already done before the game launched, Season of Havoc. They just kind of merged that in. Yeah. And so they, they didn't deliver on anything that they talked about on the combat cast. And then they, deal, they, they dole out this patch. So they went so far down it was it, it was just it was shocking to me because that's this is not what I expected. It made me say, who at Netherrealm is really the one making these decisions? Because you would think, like you said, with their competitors really being like the talk of, you know what, forget Mortal Kombat, the word on the street. Not only is the word on the street about MK bad, but the word on the street of their competitors is also so good. So it's a it's a yeah. double whammy here. And I thought for sure something would get done. And what they did was they're turning this game into Mortal Kombat 11. They are turning this game into MK11. They are taking every th option from every character. And eventually, I'm sure they'll come for Raiden and Kenshi. And then we'll have a game where everyone is just doing pokes, down ones, backdash, and throw. Yeah, I, I, I'm a bit... Well, I'm also... I don't know if you've seen the, the Virtual Fighter... Uh, con uh, conversations going on now and they're going to have, I mean I wouldn't really call Virtua Fighter a direct competition to Mortal Kombat but I think if we consider Tekken and Street Fighter and they're saying Virtua Fighter is going to be direct competition to them, that's just going to be another game provided they bring the heat the way Tekken and Street Fighter have. that is, you know, pushing Mortal Kombat out of the spotlight so hopefully all of this pressure that they're receiving and all of this negative attention they're receiving turns Mortal Kombat 2 into something amazing I don't believe it will. Uh, I've got other reasons as to why I think now Mortal Kombat is going to be is basically doomed. I think the Warner Brothers live service talk is going to suck up Mortal Kombat and it's probably only going to get worse from here on out. So we might look back on these balance changes and think that, you know, this was a high point for the game because I can't see anything good coming. I think they're done with the game. I think they're just slowly watering everything down to the point of nobody can do anything. Then they will just keep releasing characters, cameos. They'll do a quick combat pack two, and they're done. Do you think they'll do combat packs here? I think they, it is planned. I believe they will do it just to try to eke out as much money as they can. But I think they're done. I, think, I don't think they had any plans in doing anything for this game at all. From I, the beginning. From the beginning. I think this game was just put out to be a quick project. And I don't think they had any intention of... I mean, they just released a, a cameo skin in the store. And the uh, the cameo skin is more than the actual characters. Skins. The, the Kung Lao UMK3 cameo skin costs more than the actual characters do. Skins. And I just yeah. think they're just releasing skins for characters. I mean, like they're, I think they've really ramped up their skin skin re releasing, right? I think they've released 
They've released more things in the store now than they have in quite a long time. So I really think it, they're ramping up how much money they can make quickly uh, before like the word on this game, game completely sours to a point that it's not salvageable anymore. I honestly think that is the route that they are going. I don't think from the beginning this game was planned as anything but a quick, quick project. And I don't know what's next, but I don't think they had any thought into this game. I mean, they just made the Pro Series $200,000 for the season finale. And I mean, I looked at the combo breaker numbers. They didn't really increase. I still do not expect MK to be in the top three. Uh, yeah, you know, even though they're giving away, I don't know. Did you ever look into? Is that a pro stop for Street Fighter as well or Tekken? Uh, I think I think Street Fighter and Tekken just do their own thing. I don't think that I I haven't seen anything that says it is, but I know they've got a whole circuit. So it is plan, the highest I, oh. paid. So Mortal Kombat has been the highest payout at every tournament they've appeared at. Oh yeah, in terms of payout, more. I mean, uh, historically, Mortal Kombat's always been the highest. But I mean, I understand that the finale was not a lot of money originally. But the qualifiers were doing $10,000. Yeah. So they have had the highest payout at every tournament, and their offline tournament attendance is abysmal. They just <laughs> held in South, South America had a 69-man tournament. Have I ever talked about a tournament I did something in that had 69 people? The MK community would rag on me and say it was a blockbuster video tournament. Yet... The numbers today are worse than numbers were 25 years ago. Again, a Menlo Park Mall local for tokens yeah. in Mortal Kombat 2. 80 people for tokens. Could I just ask, who is the person that said that Mortal Kombat players are just more responsible with their money? Uh, that would be uh, Pig of the Hut had that conversation with me that said he said they're just more responsible for their money that they realize that ten thousand dollars just isn't enough. Can I, can I ask? Did you ask him where the hell did he pull that stat from to say that they're more responsible from their money? Where did he get that data? It was just I don't. It was just a private conversation because I, in general, I guess if you look at the the finale, I guess from the from the logic of you're traveling to all these tournaments, however. Even if you were to win, let's say the four pro stops and you win 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, right? that's 20,000. And then you win the grand tournament of, uh, 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 which is 50,000, yeah. 30,000. So that would be 50,000. So if you got first in everything, your highest payout is 50,000. And then if you go from that to then taxes come out, et cetera, you don't even make as much as a kid who's 15 years old working at McDonald's. You, ba you barely make that kind of money. You know? uh, so it just comes down to you're spending all this money to travel, et cetera, for the same pay as someone working at McDonald's in New York. Uh, and, yeah. or, or maybe just slightly more. And that kid would make about $30,000, but you're going to have significantly higher taxes you know, unless you have an LLC and... I highly doubt Mortal Kombat players have gotten that far into it, uh, but yeah. From that it's point of view, from, from that point of view, it's it's not worth the money. But yeah, to say that oh well, Mortal any Mortal Kombat player is actually that's their line of thinking. That's not true at all because we know people have traveled for less. You know, to yeah, this day, it's not. It's not about for that. Less. I think that saying that they're more financially responsible is just a cop out. I mean, uh, any any anyone with half a brain cell can just work out when something is not worth it. This would have been the same reaction if it was uh, if Tekken players or Street Fighter players didn't think they were worth it. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, but the current Mortal Kombat player base to me looks they they seem much younger than Tekken and Street Fighter and their overall player base, or at least yeah. on the pro side. So with you know, in terms of like financial responsibility, I find it hard to believe that a group of teenagers or young adults are more financially responsible than actual adults that have been traveling for a long time. It's just that seems like a cop out to me. It's just the fact that the game is shit and people don't want to play it. And so they don't want to travel for it because there's no passion for it. And they also just don't think it's, it's not worth the money, especially when you can go on YouTube and make money. So why would you leave the house to play a dog shit game? Yeah, what I did was I checked the combo breaker numbers after NRS changed the pot to $200,000 and they barely moved. 
Now, it hasn't happened yet. People will say that people want to register late. I do not think Mortal Kombat will be in the top three games. I don't think it'll be in the top four games. Yeah. Uh, and none of those games are giving away or are, are, are paying out what Mortal Kombat's paying out at that tournament. I, I looked at the Twitch numbers last night at 8 p.m. Mortal Kombat had 450. Tekken had a 10.6K. Street Fighter had a 12K. So yeah. if it was really the money, you would say a massive spike. And you just don't. Mortal Kombat is still in the gutter. And I know that there are people that say that the game does well on YouTube. You know, NRS people, they're just not Twitch watchers. I know you told me that, I told you that you said that's not a valid point. Do you have, I mean, what is your response to that? Uh, no, it's not a valid point because most of the uh, videos on YouTube with regards to NRS and Mortal Kombat is hate watching. People are watching the videos where they're, they're criticizing Mortal Kombat because there's a lot of anger towards it. And in terms of streams, uh, one of the uh, reasons that Mortal Kombat gets fairly decent viewership is, uh, whether people want to admit or not, is Sakanda. Sakanda gets a fair amount of viewers on here. Uh, there's not really any other Mortal Kombat YouTube streamers that are doing as well as him. Whenever I go to look, the numbers are fairly low. Even if they're higher than Twitch, Sakanda can't save the entire game. Neither can the other streamers. So in terms of viewership, when it comes to Mortal Kombat and YouTube, people are watching it because there's even a video on my channel uh, about Mortal Kombat that I put up about a month and a half ago. It's got about 120,000 views now. But it's a video criticizing the game. And the comments are overwhelmingly in favor of what I'm saying. It's not because people are chuffed or elated to watch, to, uh, watch the game or hear me speak positively about it. Even even on your channel, your your videos have been getting a lot of views and you're being hypercritical of the game. So, I mean, yeah, it gets, it gets watched more on YouTube, but the reason why is important. Exactly. And keep in mind, when they say, well, they also bring up points that look at how well this, you know, true underdog is doing or Waz is doing with his videos. But you can likewise pull up main man Sui and say, well, look at how many views he gets. So Tekken just gets... The, their, their main content creators get the same amount of views as the MK guys. And it's not like every game has its content creators that are massive, that get a, a ton of yeah. views, you know? Um, or if like someone was to use like Maximilian, Maximilian gets a ton of views no matter what game video he puts up, you know? So it, it, to, to use that as a Mortal Kombat is, you know, um, it, it, just, it just shows to me that despite the money, the interest is not there in the game. Otherwise, people would be watching it more and they'd be playing it more. Yeah. I honestly feel like this patch is the end of the game. It's, well, the, just, it's the end of the game. Just just to use established content creators as a means to say that more comments doing well is really stupid because True Underdog has, has an established fan base who are going to watch his uh, videos regardless. They might only be there for more combat videos, but that's kind of what he's built his brand on. Uh, in, in recent memory Maximilian could literally just breathe into the camera and people are going to watch him anyway and uh, and yeah main man, main man again he's a Tekken creator like using using content creators as a basis for it is, is kind of silly in my opinion yeah and I honestly think that the fact that people are still not I just want to know how much longer will people allow NRS to do this? Because the problem is there's a lot of negativity, but a lot of the people who need to be critical will not be. And they will continue to talk about the positivity or how great this is for the game, etc., which just allows NRS to keep doing this to people. The problem is the game is not selling poorly. Despite all of these mistakes, it's still selling extremely well, which says to NRS and says to Warner Brothers, you don't have to put in a single stitch of effort and we will pay through the nose for your product. How nothing will ever change with Mortal Kombat. Nothing will ever change. This patch just shows they heard and learned nothing from the previous game. Nothing. Nothing. Because it is now becoming just as bad as MK11. They don't care. They don't try. They don't even care to try. And you have said 
you had this list of things that you, that you were going to make a video on that, that should change in Mortal Kombat. It doesn't matter. Nothing will ever change. And because the thing is, as long as they're able to make money by doing this, why would they continue? What business will say, we should spend more money on our game if we're going to still sell the same amount? I mean, well, the thing is that all empires fall eventually. I mean, look at the Arkham series. It had a lot of goodwill. It might not have the like legendary pulling power that Mortal Kombat does, but it had a lot of goodwill. And Warner Brothers have managed to completely drive that entire franchise into the ground. So even though I think right now, um, it, I think Mortal Kombat 2 will probably still do well. There's only so long before people are like I've had enough and it, before it gets out to the masses because people pay more attention to what's going on right now. There's other things that Mortal Kombat has to worry about in terms of like gamers being angry at certain agencies being involved with it. Uh, there's also the fact that Warner Brothers might be moving into completely live service games, which people are not fond of, which if they do that with Mortal Kombat exclusively, that could hurt Mortal Kombat too. So I think that if Mortal Kombat continues on the trajectory it's on, it might do well for the next game and maybe the game after that, but it's not going to last forever. It'll probably take a long time because it's Mortal Kombat, but it won't last forever. And I don't think anyone that cares about their, partic- their, their franchise, no matter how much money you're getting, would want to see it doing poorly like that. I mean, I, it doesn't bring me joy to shit on Mortal Kombat because there was a time where I, there was nothing that I wanted to play other than Mortal Kombat. And... To see where it is now, people always ask me, why are you talking about it if you don't like it? And and the point is, is to point out the problems of it in hopes that people will stop accepting garbage and then start voting with their wallets. Yeah, for me, it really is. How long will these people continue to allow NRS to do this? I mean, they have, I mean, look at how they responded. They see what their player base wants. Hey, we why can't you respond and handle things like these companies do and build games like these companies do? And they literally just said, F you. Accept more of this garbage and like it. And that's what they did. They don't care. They do not care. NetherRealm Studios no longer cares about their product. They don't care what you think. They don't care about anything other than your money. And this has gotten a super extreme. This is not a Warner Brothers issue. Warner Brothers did not call Ed Boon and say, hey, can you nerf a bunch of things in the game? That is their decision. They could have gone two ways here. They could have said, the game is in some serious trouble here. If they would have said, you know what? We are not going to do a major balance patch two days or a week before a major tournament. I would accept that. Yeah. And, and if they released this patch and just said, hey, you know what? We, I would accept that. But they, they did a balance patch and did nothing but hurt the game even more. I, I just, I, I, I refuse to accept the fact that there's any hope left for this game at all. They clearly know what people want to see. They, I do not believe that they're not aware of the negative feedback of the game. I just think that they don't care. They're done. They're done. Yeah, they're, they're well aware. I know, we all know they're aware because... They were very tuned into what the players were saying back in MK9 and MKX. It's just now that things have turned negative, they pretend like they're not paying attention. Uh, even on the combat cast, they, they try to make out like they're on Twitter, but we all know they're not. They're not or where they are, and they're not interacting or, or giving any sort of validation to the criticisms people have. But, I mean, that said, the player base for Mortal Kombat 11 is, is shockingly low, and you would think that Casual players, because casual players do watch streams. They watch streams all the time. Uh, people are, are saying that it's only really the hardcore players that are on Twitch and YouTube. That's bullshit, because if you go and look at games like FIFA or Fortnite or PUBG, they've got hundreds of thousands of people watching. So there's no reason why people wouldn't be tuning in. It's not just the more hardcore players that are watching Tekken and Street Fighter. There's, there's casuals that are like just watching it as well, but nobody's watching Mortal Kombat. So it's very possible that MK1 could be the last time that NRS get to get away with this bullshit. They will have to pull something out really dramatic because Capcom did this with Street Fighter Five, and people responded, and Capcom had to respond by making a really, really good game and overhauling everything. Yeah, I, 
it goes back to even not even this game. You know, Street Fighter V, overhaul. Tekken got an overhaul late in the game. Now the product that came out is is drastically better. Yeah. NRS clearly understands, okay, we COVID was the excuse. We couldn't overhaul the game like our competitors in the previous game. We all had high hopes for MK1. Street Fighter Six came out, was great. Tekken 8, obviously great. Mortal Kombat, okay, it's been said that the game was incomplete and they have to finish the game, right? It came out six months too early. This is what people say, right? We're about to hit that six months mark. It, this this game is in a worse shape now than when it was released. Yeah. It feels more incomplete now than the day it was launched. I I I cannot believe this has happened in Mortal Kombat. I can't well, I cannot believe this show they, they 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 don't get how to make a competitive fighting game. And this was clearly designed with the competitive scene in mind, otherwise they wouldn't have done a pro competition. You don't need Which pro I think is done. I think this is it. I think this one pro tour, I'm, yeah. I honestly think they're doing one pro tour. That's it. The fact that they raised the money to 200000 there is no way that they are looking to put another some big sum of money up. There is no way they're looking. Nothing about this game says, and how they're handling things, that they are willing to dump another big sum of money into the game zero they have put the game in my opinion in maintenance mode already and it's just maintenance mode dlcs you know one pro series games done and then i believe they'll have a small team pumping out dlcs while they're also working on the next game simultaneously do you reckon the next game will get more of a development cycle or do you think they'll follow the same plan as they always do i think this game will be done making money in a year and a half maybe another year. So I would say the next game will come out relatively soon. Do you think it will reach... the uh, MK11 sold 15 million copies, right? Uh, 15, yes. Do you think MK1 will reach that? Not even close. Yeah, I don't, th I think, I don't think... I it think it could hit 10 million, which even if Tekken 8, let's say, sells 15 million. Yeah. 10 million is a hefty profit for them. To them, everybody won. The game was a great success. I, do you know what? I don't think MK1 is going to hit that 10 million mark, not unless they, they change things up. There's nothing really to get excited about. I mean, the Peacemaker hype is going to die down very quickly. And then what? They've got Ermac coming out, uh, Takeda, and Homelander. Homelander might drive some real attention to the game because of how popular the boys is. I'm guessing they're going to time it with the new season. And maybe some... I mean, I've heard that uh, Ghostface is rumored for the Combat Pack 2. I don't think no, Ghostface... Gonna... Apparently, Ghostface, Ghostface has been canceled. So it was supposed oh. to be the T-1000. Uh, Conan the Barbarian. I just... Kung Jin, Jade, Cyrex, Sector, I believe, were the Combat Pack 2 characters. Uh, and they right. got rid of Go Ghostface. And yeah, I don't think Ghostface would drive much. So, uh, I think Scream's time has passed, personally. Yeah, I think Scream's time has passed. And again, Conan the Barbarian. It's a very uninspiring, like, what are, what, what are they doing? Like, who, yeah. who, who thought that was a good idea? Yeah, there's so many better picks you could have gone with. You could have gone with John Wick, and I would have been like, okay, there's uh, there's something that I might consider wanting to see how that plays out. But Conan the Barbarian, I'm like, I mean, I, I like Conan. I like the original Arnold version, but I'm, I'm not going to buy him for DLC. I don't, I don't care that much. I don't care. I think Rambo is a much better pick than than, than Conan. You know, if they... If they did something really outlandish, like uh, I don't know, like Rocky Balboa or something, I'd be like, oh, okay, that's a, that's a bit weird. But it's like Negan, right? It's so out of field that maybe I'd want to try it. But I, if if the DLC rumors are to be believed, I don't think they're going to push as much sales as the uh, as Combat Pack One, you know, because especially because of the time that is that Combat Pack One has dropped, Peacemaker, um, 
Homelander and who was the other one they put in there? Chris forgotten Nugget, that. Homelander, Ermac, and Takeda. Wasn't there was someone else? Wasn't there? there was three guest characters? Uh, Peacemaker, Homelander. I don't remember. Yeah, that's how that's how inspiring it is. I can't even remember that, that, the comment. That, that 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 is exactly how inspiring it is. Uh, and <laughs> Omni Man. That's what it was. Omni Man. That's it. Yeah, people even forgot about him. <laughs> I don't see him now. Which is terrible. <laughs> that's that's terrible. But it's true. Uh, wow. I do you think there's a chance they cancel Combat Pack Two? Um, I think it's, it's possible. I mean, if they've already got it planned, then potentially. But I think that they'll probably try to do what you said last time, where they'll try to squeeze as much out as possible. But it's just, I mean, Omni Man, Peacemaker, and Homelander were clearly made for an injustice game. That if they were put in injustice, I'd be like, okay, these are good additions because they're all superhero slash supervillain type characters. But for Mortal Kombat, it's just like. It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, they, they're such weird picks for Mortal Kombat. The horror thing that they had going on and the action movie stuff, that made more sense to me. I think the like Spawn, for example, I think that was an excellent pick for Mortal Kombat. It's a shame that it was in MK11 and not a game like MKX, but the character choice made sense to me. With this, like even Freddy Krueger, that made sense to me. Kratos made sense, but... These three, I'm just like, I don't know. There's there's something wrong about it. It feels like when I watch Omni Man, it feels like he was designed to fight Superman on screen, and that might have been very entertaining. But then I guess the, you know people believe that MK1 was meant to be Injustice, and that's why Shao Kahn looks the way he does, you know. And and um, Rain was meant to be Aquaman. So I don't know, man. It's just it's just all over the place. I, I, I'm not really too sure about that. I've heard it, but like I said, we'll never prove it uh, unless Ed Boon comes out and says it himself. But makes so like look at Shao Kahn's face and his axe. You know, they they that's Steppenwolf. He looks like Steppenwolf. He's got Steppenwolf's axe as well. Yeah, and it's it it makes a lot of sense that they will always do the least amount of work possible. So they just said we'll just re we'll we'll reuse the art. You know, which, you know, so yeah, I could see that. It could have been Steppenwolf, which makes a lot of sense to me now. I think what will happen is they will obviously release the rest of Combat Pack 1. I think there'll be a very small expansion uh, story mode-wise to get the Combat Pack 2 characters in there. It'll be something where, like, you buy the expansion, you get two of the characters right away, right? They're immediately integrated into the story. And, uh... Then Combat Pack 2 and that's it. No Season 2 of the Pro Tour. They might try to do some online stuff like, you know, the, the during the COVID days where they tried the regional online tournaments, etc. But I don't think, you know, and I, I don't think offline, I don't think this tournament will be seen offline hardly ever again. It will make one yeah. Evo, it will make another one, which is a disgrace. Which is a disgrace. I, it will not see two Evos. Um, I think the offline attendance after this pro tour, after this Evo, I'm not even sure. Evo is not even a pro stop. So I don't know how big Evo is even going to be for Mortal Kombat. I'm expecting Street Fighter to be over 5,000, Tekken to be over 5,000. I do not think Mortal Kombat will have a very strong showing. No, I won't. And I think that's the end. I don't think any of the top players will travel anymore. And I think the tournaments will be even smaller than they are now. I think online the tournaments will be even smaller than they are now. And for you young players out there, I know you guys want to make a name for yourself. And this game is this. And people are just saying that because they can't deal with... Look, man, your game is complete trash. And you are competing in a pool, of a playing field of, you know, maybe a handful of people. Yeah. Whereas the rest of the games are playing against thousands of people. You are proving nothing. And this is not to talk about their skills, but the game is so bad that people just don't want to compete in it. They don't want to compete in it. What's worse is newer players don't want to come to the game, right? 
you know, like for Mortal Kombat, we see other players going to Tekken and trying to become very good at it. Yeah. You don't see any Tekken players coming to Mortal Kombat. And people have tried to say, oh, well, that's because they can't cut it. No. If they liked the game, they would stay with it. Mortal Kombat yeah. has always made the excuse of, oh, they just don't like it because they're losing. You know, that kind of garbage, right? But if they liked the game, I assure you they would stick with it. They come, they play it, they say it's trash, I don't like it, and they leave. Yeah. That's the, that's that's why the scene can't grow. We can't even get people from other scenes to come in and stay with the game because they don't like it. I, yeah, I just don't it, the man. notion that, that people are they're like, oh, you can't cut it in my game. It's just like it's a fucking video game. Relax yourself. Like, it's not it's not rocket science. If I like the game enough, I'll sit and learn it. It might take me longer because I haven't played the other versions, but it's not because people can't cut it in Mortal Kombat. First of all, it's the most simplistic of the um the the major three fighting games and it's just bland like it offers less so why would anybody when they've got rich fighting systems in street fighter 6 and tekken 8 come over to um more combat one where it offers much less there's issues with the online nrs seem incompetent so they can't release seasons properly they release weird balance patches that make no sense and just in general, don't really provide any real updates to the game when their games are getting proper updates. That's 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 the way I look at it. When I when I started playing Virtua Fire, I went over to Virtua Fire and I was like, oh, let me take a look at what Virtua Fire offers, and I like the options that it had. Now I think that uh, Virtua Fire is going to do well if they continue down the road that they were going down with Virtua Fire Five Ultimate Showdown and they they uh, expand on it. And I think, again, that is going to hurt Mortal Kombat. But I think people will be happy to move to new fighting games if the fighting game developers provide them something that they can be happy with. NRS haven't done that, and that's really the only reason. What do you think it would take for somebody at NRS or Warner Brothers to notice, like, this is a problem? Um, I think at NRS, they probably know that their scene is very unhappy of them. And so I think they have noticed. It's just a case of... I think that there are other things in motion with these developers. There's, I don't know if you know about a, a company called uh, Sweet Baby Inc. Mm -hmm. And how they have sort of like infiltrated a lot of different studios and basically told them to do certain things with stories and characters. And I think that the when it, when it comes to gameplay, I don't think those people have much of a say in it. But I do think there are people that are working there that, as they say in, in like wrestling, go into business for themselves. And rather than listening to people that really understand their franchise, they sit there and they look and they go, okay, what do I think I should do here? When really you should be listening to the, especially because the feedback has been overwhelmingly negative and some of the things being pointed out are so obvious. So it's not that they don't know. I do believe they know. It's just that I don't think they're going to change because I think they think they're right. And unfortunately, because Mortal Kombat 1 has sold quite well, despite the negative feedback, it's not going to make them go, okay, changes need to be made. What needs to happen is Mortal Kombat needs to cease selling. People need to stop buying costumes, even if it's for their favorite characters. They start to lose out. They, Warner Brothers doesn't see a profit anymore. And then somebody from higher-ups is going to come downstairs and be like, what the hell's going on? And if they don't respond, people will, you know, either get sacked or they'll, they'll, it'll be crunch time and they'll have to produce something that people like. Yeah, but we both agree that this has nothing to do with Warner Brothers. You know, this is NetherRealm. The way the game is, is all their fault. 100% their fault. It's not Warner Brothers. They don't tell you to nerf everything. They don't tell you to water it down. They don't tell you to scrap everything and build it back up. Everything about this game... Could it be that they are just, they, they truly believe that they need to make the game as watered down and as simple as possible to sell the game? That they don't believe that if it has any type of substance or advance that people will say, you know, well, I'll just play something else instead of Mortal Kombat. I think that, I think that this is in line with me walking up to my mom and saying, mom, I didn't like Mortal Kombat 10. Can you make something else? And instead of looking at the reasons for why I gave her and understanding them, 
because she doesn't understand how to make fighting games, she will just water it down to be like, okay, I've taken all the crazy shit out, and now you've got nothing to complain about. But that's not what people's complaints were. So it, with NRS's um, situation, I said it before, and I truly believe this. I think that with MK9 and MKX, it was lightning in a bottle, just like Shaolin monks. I don't think they do these things intentionally. I think they kind of stumble into them. And now they've stumbled into a mess. And because they don't understand balance and they don't understand how to make a fighting game that is nuanced and complex, they don't know how to stumble out of the mess. And so they're falling further and further into it. So I, I, I don't, there's no easy answer for it, unfortunately. I don't think the guys there will ever be able to make Mortal Kombat 1 into a respectable fighting game. And if they're the ones that are going to be producing Mortal Kombat 2, I dread to think what it's going to be like because, again, they're going to look at the feedback they've received from MK1. They're not going to digest it properly, and they're going to apply a bunch of changes that are also going to make us scratch our heads. I just I don't think they understand fighting game balance. I think that they are better off making Netflix uh, shows or trying to do a Shaolin Monks 2 because in terms of competitive fighting games, they you just have to look at their competitors even ones from the past, and you can clearly see who understands balance, who understands the complexities in their characters, and who doesn't. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I think that maybe they might have to take a long break, do something like another Shaolin Monks, something like that. Like To your point, that they just need to get that taste out of people's mouths. Yeah. But really, yeah. it's selling well. I mean, I, that's, the that's the problem. It's I don't think any other game could do this and sell like Mortal Kombat. So I guess what is it about the NRS crowd that they have just become apologists for NRS? Uh, it's hard to say, really. I think that Mortal Kombat, unlike the other fan games, has a bigger audience like worldwide, uh, at least in the West, actually, just because of the cinematic nature of it, like the history of it, uh, like the level of gore in Mortal Kombat has always been like a big selling point. But I do think we're getting to the point now where people are less interested in that and they're more looking for other things. So I think resting on that goodwill is going to eventually bite them in the back. But I think with Tekken and Street Fighter, their scenes are, the games are definitely catered more to the hardcore. And so when something goes wrong, because there's not as many people playing them as Mortal Kombat generally or historically, word gets around much quicker and people shut down. So like with Street Fighter V, word got around very quickly that it was dog shit because there was less people to get around to. With Mortal Kombat, I think there's so many people that are just not tuned in to what is going on. I think there's people that don't even, un they don't really know that there's so much backlash online. And so Mortal Kombat is able to get away with things. I think that's changing slowly, especially you can see it with the amount of people that are playing on console and on PC. And you can see Twitch numbers that I do think that that is starting to change. I don't know if it's changing fast enough, but I think it's because the casual player, player base for Mortal Kombat is very large. Yeah, I mean, if you just look at this game, though, just from the production value, it looks very low. Very slim, tiny health bars. The Raiden wins, Scorpion wins, whatever wins. Looks like somebody wrote it with a Sharpie marker. Like yeah. everything is low value. The skins are low value. Invasions is low value. You have cameos and they all do nothing now except for two or three. Right? Everything is low value. The characters are just the characters of poke, 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 back dash, throw. The reason why things like micro-ducking is such a big deal in Mortal Kombat is because throwing is such a big deal because you can't do anything else half the time. Like, there's no... The game is so simplistic. I honestly think if they put a, a, a tech like Street Fighter in here, it would break the game because it would just... It would halt half of the, the, the mind games of Mortal Kombat. Uh, yeah. I, just and that just shows how simple the game is. The production value of the game is garbage. The customizations are garbage. The, the skins are garbage. The way the cameos are used are garbage. The characters and what they can do is bland and watered down. Their single player mode garbage. Their net code is garbage. The game is out for six months. You still don't have the ability to cross play with tournaments. You still don't have even an online practice. 
I mean, when are they adding? This game will be a year old. You, you know what? They may never put it in. I want you guys at home to realize that. They may never do it. Yeah. Never. Never. And there will be no need because the game, again, is still doing so well. But again, I think that that eventually will die out. I think even if, like, say, for example, GTA 6, there's very little that they can do now to tank the sales of it. But let's say that it comes out and it's an absolute dumpster fire. I think that GTA has built up enough goodwill that that, that game might survive. But I definitely see, I think you'll see a knock-on effect onto GTA 7, you know. So I think if they continue down this trajectory and Tekken and Street Fighter continue to impress, then, you know, whenever MK2 decides to come out or the next Injustice game, I think people are going to look back on the negative press for this game and be like, hold on a minute. A lot of people said this game wasn't shit, even though it's so this game was shit, even though it sold well. Maybe I should second guess myself. I mean, I, know, I already know a lot of people that have already said to me that are not like hardcore players. They're just casuals. They're like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not pre-ordering Mortal Kombat again. Like they'd have to do something special. But a lot of people and say don't that buy what it. they do is they lure you in with the promise that things might be different, and then they're not. Every single, every single time. Yeah, I'm not falling for that again. That's that's for me. I was like, I'll buy a Mortal Kombat game in the future because obviously I want to cover it. And to be fair to it, I'll I'll buy it. But I'm not buying no premium editions, even if they create this amazing game. I would need to buy the standard version first, and if I'm like, okay, they've created something great, then they can build up my goodwill for the next game. But in terms of investing in premium collector's editions again with them. That's, that, that ship has sailed, and I would encourage everybody to do that going forward just so that they don't put out bullshit like this again. And, and I would agree. And I also want to say this is why you also can't believe this garbage that people try to the propaganda about the game is doing well, better than ever, because I promise you after the money is gone, the Pro Series is done, Evo done, nobody will mention this game again. And everybody... In hindsight, we'll go back and say, yeah, this game was terrible. Like Mortal Kombat 11. People tried to, you know, talk about this and that. It's not as bad. And wait, be patient, all this stuff. And then when this game came out, they were like, yeah, it was horrible. Garbage game. Agonizing to play. And then this game will be the same thing. Once the last, once the pro series is over, and NRS can no longer dangle a dollar sign over somebody and content creators, then the truth will come out. And I think, like I said, after Evo, the game is done. It's over. There, there will be no buffs handed out to characters. None. When this game came out and I would stream, people would say to me, Tom, just you know, wait for the buffs. Wait for the game to get better. And I would told them, there will never be any buffs. This is it. This is the yeah. game. They'll only make it worse. And people always say to me, Tom, you're an NRS hater. And then it happens. It's only because... And, and if I'm wrong on this criticism, please correct me. I have been saying for years that NRS has proven that they have become the company that will do the least amount of work possible. And if they can get away with doing zero and sell it to you, that's what they will do. Yeah. Uh, how long does MK11 and MKX were both supported for two years, weren't they? MKX was, it got a massive overhaul at the end of the game's life. I don't know that that was a good decision in the, in the long run. Yeah. Um, because a lot of the stuff like armored launchers kind of needed to be there to keep certain things in check, and then, but the game really didn't see any tournaments after that. Uh, and then MK11 was supported for two years. They said it was going to be supported for longer. Um, MK11 was just a, a big debacle because there's so much that was untouched. It was, uh, I mean, MK11 went unfinished. People said this game was unfinished. It needed six more months. Guys, yeah. this is the sixth month. Yeah. This is it. This is the game. Yeah. This is no, six not, months. I'm going to change. The, so if you tell me that you think this game needed six more months, this is how it would have released. Yeah. Is this acceptable? And if the game needed a year or two years... What, what were they doing? They, I think they, that they this stopped game working on MK11 two years in. Yeah. 
So, so from 2020, so from the game came out in 2019, 2021 till now, three years. And this is what they gave us. Three full years. This game has been out for six months. I want you guys to truly digest that. Six months. It's shambolic. I was going to say the same thing. It's so... For you guys who to think, oh, the, the, the game was released six months too soon. Man, this game was released two years too soon. I yeah. don't I don't think they care. No, I don't they, think, they don't care. They I don't got think their the money. plan was to support anything. I think the plan was thirty thousand dollars for the pro series. That shows you what the plan was. It was meant to be quick, throw some DLC out there, throw a little bit of change at a pro scene, not much, because we don't want to spend too much. We want to maximize profit. And create a couple of combat pack, story expansion, done. Next game out in a year and a half. I think they're actually yeah. actively working on something else right now. I don't think they're I don't think they're gonna spend a single minute of more development time for this game. I think this game think is the I would say this game is the biggest, I can't say the word failure because people will say financially, but as far as how it was as a fighting game goes. It is the biggest display of incompetence in fighting game history, is this game. As bad yeah. as Dragon Ball Z Fighters is, this game is on a whole nother level of incompetence, which says a lot. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely up there in terms of just massive disappointments, especially following MK11 and the way that game fell off for a lot of people. It's, it's, it's really disappointing to see what they've done. I can only hope that the third time is the charm and that MK2 comes out in a coherent state with... I just I don't want it to be anything like MK11 or MK1. I want it to be completely different. You know, whatever route they have to go down to do that, whether it's... They can, they can stay 2D, they can go 3D, they, whatever they need to do, to make it feel like this is so far removed from the last two games we got. Because MK1 is not that far removed from MK11. Like, it's enough that it's its own game, but it's not enough for me to be like, they didn't reuse a bunch of shit here. Like, I want to see something fresh from MK. And I want it to play completely differently. I want it to introduce things that are different. And I know we call for legacy all the time, but it's hard to build up a legacy when the foundation is shit. The foundation needs to be strong first, and then you can build a legacy from that. But they just, unfortunately, haven't nailed that. I thought that they got it with MKX. I, I thought that MKX was a step in the right direction, even though it was a bit broken. Sure. And then they just, I don't know what happened to MK11. They, they fell asleep at the wheel. And now they've just fallen off a cliff. And it's not about, and people make the argument, John, relax, relax, Johnny Cage is still good. It's not a matter on if the character can still win or place. It's yeah. a matter of who wants to do 1-1, one, one, down 1, poke, backdash, throw. Who finds that enjoyable? Yeah. Nobody. 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 There's no character expression. That's the problem. Doing 1-1, one, one, down poke, 1-1, one, one, then whatever it is. It's, that's just like, okay, cool. Like... The true underdog was talking about uh, supernatural abilities and wanting to play characters like that. But does it matter if they have supernatural abilities if all you're doing is pressing strike, strike, throw, strike, throw, strike, throw? Like in MKX, you had Scorpion that was that his his you could see his personality in the gameplay, and you could see how crazy he was and how much he would rush you and force you to like build a very strong defensive game. Otherwise, he would just open you up. And because his personality was like that, but the Scorpion in MK1 is very bland, and his gameplay makes it even worse. Like I don't feel like I'm playing a ninja with fire powers. I, I, the only like glimpse of fire you ever see is this Hellfire that people barely even use anyway. Yeah, no. So in the end, I just think this 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 patch shows that the game is done. That's it. Yeah. And it, it just shows it's not Warner Brothers' fault. It's not because the game needed six more months. They had no plan. Yeah. They had no plan. 
Well, this is the game they said that it was going to be in six months, so we've got it now, and uh, we can confidently say that it's dog shit. Yeah. And on that note, I, I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, unfortunately, you know, this is, I think, I think this is really is the end of MK. I don't think it will get any worse, but I think it's, it's, this is, it's on its deathbed and it's just waiting for its last tournament to be played and then it's over. Yeah. Well, we'll be here to cover its end and, and hopefully um, NRS learns from its mistakes. Hopefully, but they, the next time around, I don't think they'll get as many people. And but it will continue until, like you said, somebody from Warner Brothers comes down and says, "What is the problem?" Yeah, yeah. When profits start to hit, when shit hits the fan for profits, that's when WB will get off their lazy asses and they'll, they'll come downstairs and they'll be like, "Right, we need the, we need results." But that being said, um, even though it's good to put the blame on on NRS for the way the game has turned out, I think that it is better to stress that WB is really pushing live service now. So whilst I think NRS will probably create another game that is, is shit, I think WB is probably going to make it exponentially worse with their live streaming ideas yeah. or live service ideas. 100%. And we'll be here to, to cover that too. <laughs> yep. so, well, thanks for joining me, Mike. I know it's late where you are, but I, you know, just to get a reaction for this patch. And the verdict yeah, no is, way. it's terrible. It's terrible. All right. Well, you have a good night. Thanks for joining me, man. No worries, bro. Cheers.